Get off the right wheel. What's going on everybody out there in social media land? This is Ricardo Suber and I actually just wanted to just get on and kind of have a heart to heart with everyone. So, um, and of course I plan to leave this up. Maybe I'll post it to YouTube or not. I'm not too sure. Um, but I wanted to actually just have a heart to heart conversation just to talk about number one, why I actually got started in this part time business that I'm in. And um, I'll kind of talk about what was going on in my life around that time. And then I think what's even more important is I'll discuss why I'm still in it, why I've been actually doing the same business for the last nine plus years. And I think that that in itself is a huge accomplishment. I think we know all throughout the US when someone gets started in a business, typically um, most people, I think 90 90 plus percent of businesses fail in their first year. And so just the fact that, you know, I'm still in business, let alone the same business, um, nine and a half years later, I think it's absolutely amazing. Um, certainly not tooting my own horn um, because of that, but it's also just due to the support, due to all the tutelage and the trainings that we've gotten through, um, thanks to all of our you know, our partners and the products and a lot of things that I'm not personally responsible for. Um, but that being said, I did want to just kind of have a heart to heart just in terms of just talking about my journey and how things have actually changed today. So, um, you know, again, my name is Ricardo Suber. I am um, at the position known as Senior Vice President um, to date. Right now it is September 4th, 2020. And, um, you know, about nine and a half years ago, I was working as a software support engineer, was working for one of the world's largest computer companies. And um, I'll actually back up. Actually, about 10 years ago to the date, um, I was actually working at this company, had a prestigious title, was working in upstate New York. I had no plans of leaving that particular organization. I was there, I was making good money. And um, there was a gentleman who kept trying to get the concept of having a home-based business. He kept trying to get that concept in front of me. And I was not open. I was like totally closed off to the idea. Very, very happy with what I was doing. I, I had my head down. And um, although I had seen some changes go on at work, um, you know, this was in late 2010, just you know, shy of about a year and a half from the economic downturn, and there were a lot of internal reorgs going on. So a lot of people were being let go, some people were retiring early. It was crazy, it was like the wild, wild west. But I told that gentleman, no, I don't wanna look at anything part-time, I'm good. April 7th, 2011, it was a Thursday, I was called into my boss's office, and she said, Rick, today is your last day. And literally, she handed me a pink slip and she gave me a half cut out cardboard box. She had security walk me to my office to clear out my things. And they literally walked me to the door. And that was my last day at that particular job. They had a massive reduction in force. Um, most of the people that I worked with were out of a job. A few um, of their jobs got shipped to China and it kind of gave me, it, it, it totally took me by surprise. I had never been in that situation before. And, you know, it just really just caused a whole paradigm shift in my mind. I went through anger, depression, all sorts of things. I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills. And nothing about having a part-time business at that point in my life ever really occurred to me. But it just so happened, about a month later, that same gentleman who had initially brought this whole concept of having a home-based business, he just happened to follow up with me. He had no idea what was going on in my life. Um, but he followed up, he had just gone to a convention, um, but he reached out to me early morning one day and he said, hey man, I just wanna see if you might just happen to still be, if you might happen to be open since you weren't open a few months ago. And at that point, I was like, whatever it is, show me. I, I, I wanna know a little bit more. So I drove from Poughkeepsie, New York 
to Brooklyn, New York. So everybody's on the East Coast. Pough Poughkeepsie to Brooklyn is a good hour and a half with no traffic. It took me about two hours to get there. I drove there and we sat down at a Starbucks. It was him, a couple of other folks, and he just mapped out a game plan. He was like, look, here's how you can make some extra money. Here's how you can do it. And he just like drew everything out on this sheet of paper and it made complete sense. And the whole idea behind this particular business that I got in was the ability to make money on products and services people use every day. So the concept of the business was, you know, saving money on a light bill, on a gas bill, on a cable bill, on your phone bill. I was like, this stuff is a no brainer. I was literally in my mind, I was doing the math in terms of how much money I could save every single month if I had been in this business. Not to mention the tax write-offs because now these become things that you could potentially write off on your taxes. So all this is spinning in my mind. At this point, I'm starting to run my savings up, but I literally overdrafted my account to get my investment up to do this business, okay? Let me actually plug my phone in. One second. So I literally got everything together and I invested in this whole business concept. And it was the second best decision business-wise that I could have made. The first, the best decision I would have made would have been if I had invested while I did have the job. Because I was literally building this business with a, with a gun to my head, so to speak. I was, um, I had no full-time income coming in and I was just running this thing like on fumes, literally. Um, but it was a great decision. Um, within three weeks, um, I actually um, achieved a bonus, um, a pretty good bonus, a, a check with a comma in it. Um, and, you know, things weren't always easy, though. I mean, when you, whenever you start something new, you're always going to have challenges. I definitely did. Um, part of me felt like, you know what, I know how to do it. I can kind of figure it out. But once I began to humble myself and became a true student of the industry of network marketing and, and really understanding why there's a stigma and, and, and why certain people seem to just be successful. Once I really realized and, and, and got it down to a science, things took off. So on month eight, I went to, and, and again, I pulled money out of I don't know where, but I went to a training in Chicago and I, I, I'll never forget this. I went down with a, with a few partners, went to Chicago. Many of us stayed in like one hotel room, but we got like the best like world-class training. And it was like, it was probably the best um, weekend at that time where I really got that all intensive, like, this is what you're supposed to do. And running out of that training, literally that month, you know, hit almost five figures in one month. Um, and it was just an amazing time. It was something that was unbelievable. And I have some notes in front of me because there's a certain points that I wanted to cover, but that is kind of like how my journey started in the business. Um, I had ups and downs. Not every month is the same, um, but there are certain principles that do work in network marketing and it doesn't matter what company you're with. It just so happened that I hit it out the park the first time around. And I think that when a lot of people get started in, net, in a network marketing company, many times their experiences vary based on certain factors. If their company is good or bad, that's great, you know. Um, if, if their team is good, if they've had, you know, good support from their sponsor or from people elsewhere in the organization, that's another factor. You know, it could just be what's going on in your life. There's some people they've had to take a step back just based on what's going on. Or maybe for whatever reason, somebody hit a bump in the road. But my mindset was when I got started, I was like, I, I wanted to become obsessed with the people who were successful. I wanted to like know their stories. I wanted to know who their families were, where they lived, and like what separated them from where I was. And I wanted to do everything that I could to close the gap. Okay. So those are just some of the things that I did. So, you know, 
why did I start? Well, first off, I started because I was open, all right? Um, it made sense. The products made sense. The industry reputation. So this was another thing that was a stumbling block for me. Network marketing has a stigma. Network marketing, for everybody who doesn't know, um, the alias for network marketing is MLM. MLM stands for multi-level marketing. As soon as you say MLM to most folks, people like immediately they tune out. They're like, oh gosh, they start to dissociate. And I get it because in the beginning, I'm telling you, I was really, really nervous. I'm like, I hope these people pay me. I hope it's not a scam. You name it. I was the most critical person and I, I, I have an engineering brain, so I, I needed to make sure the numbers worked and everything. Um, so I studied the industry. I learned what the Direct Selling Association was and I learned that our company was a member of the Direct Selling Association, which is key. It's a third party organization that makes sure that the members are abiding by a certain code of ethics. Um, I wanted to understand, okay, is this business in the Better Business Bureau? I learned that our company had an A rating in the Better Business Bureau, so that was important. I wanted to learn because no matter what company you, you Google, you could even Google Google, and you're going to have people who speak negatively of it. So we had that in our um, business as well. So in the beginning, it was important for me to understand what people were saying positively about the company and what people were saying negatively about the company. And I was seeing positive and negative things, but I wanted to get behind the why. And, and honestly, most of the negative reviews, to be honest, were people who either went in and they didn't do the work that was required. Maybe when they got in, somebody mismanaged their expectations. They said, hey, you're gonna make a million dollars in your first 24 hours, which obviously you're not gonna do that. Um, but I also looked at the people who are doing well, and I, man, to this day, I feel bad for the people who initially brought me in because I would badger them with questions. I would hang on their every word. I remember we would do meetings in Brooklyn every week, and almost every week I would drive from Poughkeepsie to Brooklyn, almost two hours, to go to a meeting that happened every single Wednesday. And I would go, and I would stay for the meeting, and then even after the meeting, we go downstairs to this lounge and I would talk to the leaders and I was just like soaking in like all of that info because I really needed this business to work. And if it weren't for those really hard times, we wouldn't have been able to get to where we've made it today. And I truly believe this is just the beginning. But anyway, that's what I got, why I got started. Just kind of fast forwarding. Um, in late 2016, um, almost about four years ago, um, we hit a position called senior vice president where the company actually takes up a car payment. And at the time, you had no choice. You had to get a silver BMW. So what did I get? I got a silver BMW. So it was a nice upgrade from a Honda Civic with 200,000 plus miles on it. And um, just a wonderful experience getting my parents um, and my aunt and my sister uh, out to Las Vegas um, where we got presented with a new BMW. I think the best part about that was having the team there and just being able to celebrate with just so many people who we couldn't have done it without them. You know, it wasn't just me. It was definitely due to having being in a great industry, but on top of that, being in a phenomenal company. And then on top of that, having what I consider, of course I'm biased, but what I consider the best team in the company. So, um, but all that being said, that's kind of been my journey. Um, but the reason why I wanted to do this video today is because someone had asked me recently, you know, you're still in that business, why are you still in that business? And to me, it's always been a no brainer. Maybe I just haven't expressed this, but I'm still doing this business today. The products change, but the company is still the same. The company is Five Links. I got started um, on May 16th of 2011. That was day one for me, May 16th of 2011. I'm still in today. Um, the reason why I'm still in is that the company still just makes complete and total sense. You know, one thing that I understood when I studied the history of the company, the company started with, and this is before I was in, the company was in long distance. It was in VoIP, which stands, over, which stands for 
voice over internet protocol. They had video phones. They looked like giant for foreman grills. And so like after the giant, you know, earthquake that they had in Haiti many, many years ago, you know, during the Iraq war, um, these phones, they were vital. They helped people see people that they were talking to and it allowed people to talk over the internet. But what happened? Well, you had your Skypes, you had, you know, FaceTime come out. You have all these video technologies was, which made that technology obsolete. But what this company has always done is it's found wealth trends ahead of when they've gone mainstream. So after that phased out, the company started partnering up with major corporations like GE for security systems. They partnered with Verizon Wireless and T-Mobile and AT&T for prepaid wireless plans. So around the time I got started, that was hot. You know, prepaid wireless was hot less than 10 years ago. All right, so I remember selling prepaid plans and getting paid on those every single month when people paid their bills. That was great. And I was helping people save money on phones. Many of the phones were free. Um, things like um, energy, saving money on a gas and electric bill. We're still getting paid on that. Um, On-demand television in 2015-ish, 2014, 2015, we got into the on-demand television industry. We got into healthy coffee and tea. We were making money on these industries that we didn't even know that they were going to blow up. But we were getting our, our, our hands in the pot of varying wealth trends. So I, I promise, like even today, I was looking at my back office, my virtual office. I'm still getting paid on gas and electric bills. I'm getting paid on television services. I'm getting paid when people protect their identity. I'm getting paid on credit restoration. I'm getting paid on CBD products, helping people get healthier. I mean, we run the gamut on when people drink coffee and tea all in one company. And the best part about it is personally, look, let me be honest. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not a big tea drinker, okay? I drink coffee now that it comes from our company, but I was not that big of a coffee drinker before getting into this business. A lot of these services I don't personally sell, but the way that this business works is as you introduce this business, you introduce it to someone who might introduce it to someone else. If that person that you didn't even meet got started in the business and they became like the biggest bestest, you know, MVP in terms of like getting customers on like, let's just say coffee, you're getting paid a percentage on that because that is in your structure, so to, so to speak. And that's actually happened. I remember I recruited a gentleman off the internet. Um, this gentleman was in Ohio, got started in the business, and he built a big organization. One of the individuals that he brought in brought in someone else who was still hitting customer clubs on top, you know, nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. And I had nothing to do with that. But because I got started and because I walked out on faith, I didn't know where my next recruit was going to go. There were, there were months where we had no production, but I stuck to the system. I stayed focused. I literally like I said, latched on to every single word that the top earners were speaking. I would watch the trainings. I would see the lifestyle videos with the BMWs. And I was like, one day I'm going to hit SVP. And when I, when I walked across that stage four years ago, like I was literally crying. Like I, it was like my journey flashed before my eyes. And that's why I stay. I, I stay because the business makes sense. The industry is a $200 billion annual industry. The company has been around since 2001. Granted, we've hit bumps. Hello, we've hit bumps. At one point, we had the people who founded the company. They, they got in legal trouble because they weren't doing the right thing. Thankfully, we had a group of investors who got in who ended up taking over the company and they brought it to like this whole new level. But the entire time, we didn't miss one pay run. In fact, many, many times, I would say at least three to four times a year, there are times they pay us early. 
So we've never missed a pay run. We've continued to build a great organization and the company continues to stand behind its motto, representatives come first. So that's why I'm still in. I wanna make sure I cover all my points. Um, I'm still in because of that. I'm still in because the company is a wealth trend company. We find a way to put people ahead of wealth trends. We were in CBD way before the general public knew what CBD was. Some of y'all out there still might not know what CBD is, but they put us in front of this wealth trend three and a half years ago. I was making money on CBD before I knew what it was at that point. There were people on our team who were selling it before I even had faith in the product, but thank God, <laughs> the people who develop the products, thank God they know more than I do because literally every single month as a result of those products being introduced into our portfolio, there are people on the team who are much better recruiters than I am, they're much better sellers than I am, but as a result of me just getting in and sticking and staying and following the system and just doing the best that I can, it's put me on a whole different level. Like here where I am right now is beautiful. This is not a 40,000 square foot mansion, but you know, I'm in a high rise. You know what I mean? I would not have been able to move out to California had it not been for this business with these expensive rents. Don't, don't get me started, right? Um, I would not have been able to put myself in a position to the point where we're able to literally make, you know, multiple commas in a month, all right? Not that I'm there yet, not multiple commas. But it, it's, it's just really interesting that you know, we're in this phenomenal industry, phenomenal organization, great support team, um, even people who aren't even on my direct team or who aren't in my direct organization. Many of these people, they're like brothers and sisters. So if you're watching this, um, I already mentioned the name of the company. The company's called Five Links. Um, you know, no, no matter who shared this video with you, whether you see it from me, of course, I wanna say get back with me, um, but if someone else happens to share this video with you, get back with them, figure out what this business is about and make an educated decision. Don't just look at this as something as like, okay, let me make an extra $5. This isn't Uber. This isn't Lyft. This isn't you get in a car, drive and, you know, make five extra dollars tonight. This is something that can really create long lasting passive residual income. So I want you guys to take it seriously. We have, um, as of the date of this recording, September 4th, 2020, we have webinars six days a week um, at 8 p.m. Eastern every single evening. Look, most of my friends and family, y'all know what I do. Y'all know I sell CBD, okay? Y'all know I sell CBD. Y'all know I'm in this business um, construct. So I don't always beat my family up at all, all the time. They know what I do. But if you happen to see this information, if this is hitting you at a time in your life where you're like, look, I could stand to make a couple extra hundred dollars a month. I would love to turn that into passive residual income where every single month, whether I get out of the bed or not, I'm making this extra money. That's what it means for me. For me, I wanna know that I'm straight. I wanna know that no matter if I do the work or not, I built a business so that every single month there's customers hitting the books. Regardless, there's people I've gotten on subscription two, three, four, five years ago who are still paying their bills, they're still getting their services, and I'm still getting those checks. And I don't say that to be braggadocious at all, but this is something that each of us need to take seriously. I, I saw, I don't know if it was American Airlines, you know, one of these airlines laid off 16,000 people this year. I've been laid off multiple times in my career. I wish I just got in this business back when it started. But at the same time, I'm glad I'm in. So for anybody who's out there, if you're looking for something extra, get back with myself or the person who shared this video with you and let's run. Let's, let's make this happen. I'll give you the real and the real of this company. It's still the best decision I could have ever made business-wise. And, and, and now I'll say second best because the best decision would have been 
that I got in earlier. <laughs> I wish I got in earlier, but the second best time is always right now. And uh, let's go ahead and rock and roll together, guys. God bless. This is Ricardo Suber signing out. Take care.